Hello, welcome to episode 4 of my RabbitMQ Easy NetQ series. Today we're going to go focus on the other end of the queue, the pulling out of the queue and receiving messages and, and doing something with them. So here is a uh, beefed up version of the code I had in the last episode. I encourage you to go check that out if you haven't yet. That's how we actually send messages to the queue. This is a C Sharp solution. There's now three projects in the solution. Episode 3, which is what I showed you last episode. Uh, I've made some changes to it. We'll go over it here uh, shortly. I have another project, Episode 4, which is the uh, console project that I'll be actually doing the, the work or simulating the work. And I have a messages project. Um, I think this class was in the Episode 3 project before I moved it to its own uh, project. So let's look at episode 3 first. This is basically the same code as last time. I've made some changes. So still connecting uh, with the factory, getting a connection. Uh, here I'm still creating the model. I'm going to actually create a properties object because I want to do something uh, different than the default. I'm setting the delivery mode to 2. This is kind of an awkward interface here, but 2 means persistent. I want to use a persistent queue this time. Uh, same exchange as before, declaring the same name to queue as before, um, this time making it durable. So note that I've already deleted the old queue from last episode. If I didn't do that, it would attempt to reuse that queue because it's the same name. And it would be not durable because it's going to just use the existing queue that's already there. So I've already deleted that queue um, with the Rabbit, uh, RabbitMQ management UI. Uh, binding the queue just like before. Uh, now we're going to send a message. This is a little different, but basically uh, very similar to before. I'm just going to enter an endless loop here. Uh, create a new message. I'm going to put a random number, my name, and a random number for the shoe size. So you'll see different messages now. I'm going to serialize it with JSON and encode it to a byte array with UTF-8. I'm going to do a basic publish to the same exchange with the routing key, the message. I'm going to print out the message that I published. I'm going to wait for one second. I'm going to keep doing that in perpetuity. So very similar to before. The my message is in its own project. It's just name and shoe size. I think I had some other field in there, but I've removed it just to simplify things a little bit. And uh, now uh, this, if I run this now, it's going to start putting messages into the queue. So it, we'll just let it publish a few here. You can see it's just random numbers. I'll just break that. If we go over to the RabbitMQ management UI, you'll see that, okay, we got six messages that are ready in the queue. And it's going to stay at that plateau. If I go to the queues, we'll see it's there. And uh, I can uh, we saw that last time, but um, we'll get the message out and requeue it. But you'll see that it's just the payload we expect, name and shoe size. All right. So let's go to our new console program. We're going to connect the same way as we did before, but now we have to actually write a consumer to get those messages. So let's uh, create a connection with our factory, create connection. Same thing as before. We'll create a channel with uh, create model, same thing as before. And now what we can do in this, and it's probably a good idea to do this in general, is to uh, declare that queue again. Now you may ask why would I want to do that? Uh, it's already being declared by the um, the program that's uh, producing messages. Well, it doesn't hurt to uh, declare it again. And it's just we can, so we can guarantee that the queue is there before we start trying to pull from it. And I think I've done something wrong here because none of these arguments are matching up. Uh, yes, it's not queue delete. I want to do queue declare. Okay. Now, if I know for sure that that queue is there, I don't have to do this, but it doesn't hurt to just try it again. Okay. Now, uh, there's several ways to write a consumer with Rabbit. There's several different, there's a couple different methods of actually uh, getting uh, messages out of the queue. So one of them is you can just pull the queue, sort of the, the pull method. Say, okay, I want a message of 
from this queue and giving that message. The other way is we can actually set up a, a listener. We can subscribe to a queue and say, okay, push out messages to me and I will handle them. And Rabbit will handle you know, pushing out messages to the consumers. It'll try to do so in a fair, fair manner. So uh, we'll, we'll do that second way. I think that's a little better way of doing it, um, to just subscribing. And the way we do this with the RabbitMQ.net is we'll instantiate uh, an inventing, eventing basic consumer object. Now again, we can create our own subclass or implement our own interface to be a consumer, but this is all we really need right now. We'll specify a channel and new up the consumer. And um, what we need now is to set up an event method here, a delegate, the received event. And well, we could do it that way, but let's, uh, let's make this a lambda. So this will expect a model and uh, event args. And we'll put some code in here to consume the message. And we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So now we've got this consumer set up and it's got a call, it's got a callback basically. You can think of it like a callback method in there that's going to be called whenever uh, a message is pushed to the consumer here. So now we'll set up um, the channel. We'll say I want to consume uh, with that queue, episode three queue, which is what we called it. Uh, no ACK false, and I'll explain what that means uh, here shortly. And we'll set up the consumer with the consumer that we just created up there, the eventing basic consumer. And now let's set up uh, some messages here. Now waiting for messages, just a little something for the console. And we'll do a read line just to make sure the program doesn't terminate uh, prematurely. Okay, and that's all we need to do. So now with the received method, we just put the code in there to actually uh, get the message and do something with it. So um, first thing we can do is we can just say, let's get the body of the message. And the EA argument has some properties, but one of them is the body, which is that byte array. The same one we passed in, we can actually get back out. Okay, now we can simulate uh, here, you know, some sort of work that we're doing. So we'll we'll sleep for say three seconds. Let's maybe this is a very slow work. Um, but before we do that, let's write out to the console that we receive the message. Receive message. And we have to uh, get that back to a string. So the way we do that is we can just UTF-8, get string, and pass in that byte array to the body there. And um, so one, so that's it. We've we've set up a uh, event to actually get the message, and it'll, it, we can do some work with it. And, but we're just going to print it out to the console. Now one more thing we need to do is that the way Rabbit works, the way messages in Rabbit works, is that Rabbit will push out a message to the consumer, and uh, at that point, it'll it'll sort of set it aside and say, "Okay, I've pushed this message out to this this connection here, and I'm going to set it aside until that connection tells me we've got the message, we're done with it, you can discard it." And that process is called acknowledgement or ACK. In uh, you know, as you see here in the um, the API. So when I said down here no ACK, what I'm basically saying is, uh, I think this is what this is, is it turns off auto acknowledgement. So I'm saying uh, false. I don't want you to automatically acknowledge messages. I want to acknowledge them manually. And why would I want to do this? If I was concerned that my uh, process might fail at consuming a message, then I'd, I want it to not acknowledge it. And then later, if this connection ever uh, disconnects from the rabbit queue, any messages that are not acknowledged that rabbit set aside earlier, it's going to say, oh, that connection went down, so I'll just bring those messages back in here into the, nor the normal queue and try to send them out to somebody else. Um, if I have multiple processes running, for instance, I'll just, okay, recycle them and I'll send them back out and let someone else try to work on them. And this is also a good reason to have your queue uh, durable as well so your messages don't get lost if the RabbitMQ uh, server goes down. They'll be saved to disk and they'll be recovered when the RabbitMQ server comes back up. So uh, at this point we've written it to console, we've done our work by sleeping for three seconds. 
So we'll d issue a uh, acknowledgement by calling basic ACK on the queue. Uh, sorry, this is should be lowercase q. Oh, sorry, not basic ACK. My, uh, yeah, yeah, it's basic ACK. Basic ACK queue. Episode 3 Q, which is what we named it. Uh, I'm doing this all wrong. Okay, sorry. We use the delivery tag. So the delivery tag is something that is being sent to us along with the body. We're saying, okay, I'm I'm taking uh, I'm signing off for that delivery. It's it's like signing off the package from UPS. Okay, I've received the package. You don't have to deliver it to me anymore. You can consider it delivered. And false, we'll just do multiple. We don't need to uh, acknowledge multiple um, messages at this point. So that should do it. So if I run this. I should receive messages, and Rabbit will probably push all the messages out to me at once. It, this method will only run once for each message. Um, but if we look at it in the, in the management UI, we'll see that it'll push all of them out to us. So why don't we try try it first without acknowledging, and see how that see how that works. So go back to the queue here. You can see that Rabbit shows we have six messages ready. None of them are unacknowledged, meaning none of them have been sent off and just haven't been acknowledged yet. And we have six total. So if we run this consumer program, it's going to receive messages. So there's the first one, second one. So it's taking three seconds each. Now at, now at this point, if we go back to the management UI, we see rabbits pushed out all six of them uh, immediately at once. It was smart enough to say, well, these are small, or there's only one connection, so let's push them all out there and um, wait for it to do some work. But notice that all six of them are unacknowledged, meaning they've not been signed for yet. So Rabbit doesn't know for sure that these messages have been successfully processed and it can forget about them. So we will close this consumer program, which closes the connection. And now it's going to take a second, but Rabbit's going to figure out, hey, those messages uh, were not acknowledged and the connection was closed off, so let's put them back into the normal queue. And you can see here that it goes back to the six of them ready, zero of them unacknowledged. So we'll comment this back out. At this point now, they will all be acknowledged as they get finished. So there you can see the first message, second message. We can watch this and we'll slowly start to see the total number go down. So it was six, now it's five, and it'll go down to four and so on. So the messages are being signed for and Rabbit says, okay, I can just forget about them now. And eventually we'll just be down to zero messages. So that's it. That's the very basic um, consumer program. Obviously, you want to do more than just write to the console and thread.sleep. You want to do your actual work here, write to a database, send emails, do some computation heavy process, um, and, and so on. But um, that's, that's where you put the code, is right there uh, in that uh, received event. So that's it for the very basics of Rabbit. Uh, please join me next time, and we'll maybe start to get into some easy net queue and see why uh, it's maybe a little bit better approach to using Rabbit, a little bit less um, intimidating than this API, uh, less knobs to uh, fiddle with, and so on. And thank you for watching.